Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Welcome back. I've got something really fun to teach you today. Hang on. Are you a Harry Potter fan? Or is someone in your family a Harry Potter fan? Well, my daughter used to be a really huge Harry Potter fan when she was growing up. And as a matter of fact, she's still a fan. So not too many years ago, she and I took a trip to Florida where the Harry Potter world was opening, just opening. We had a blast. We even had some butterbeer, which I totally loved. And we went on all the rides. It was a blast. But anyway, today I'm going to teach you how to make this box card right here. It's really easy if you're using a Cameo because the SVG comes into Silhouette perfectly. However, if you want to use the same free file with your Cricut machine, I'm going to have to teach you some things to do to it so that it will be usable. But I think you're really going to like it and I think you'll enjoy learning these new tips on how to use Silhouette Studio software for your Cricut machine so you can really tap into lots of freebies and have a good time. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing you'll need to do is to come to this website and grab the free download Harry Potter box card. I will have the link for it for you down below, uh, or you can grab it if you can see it, take a screenshot right up here. But this is what it looks like, obviously. And you'll just scroll way down here and she shows you what it's gonna come in looking like. And you'll just hit the word download right here. It's going to download an SVG and a Silhouette Studio file. Remember, it's for personal use only. So let's download it. And here it is right here like this. So the first, the next thing that I would do, now I'm using Windows 10 machine, and this is just the way it comes up on mine. I would go ahead and hit the download button, which would make it start downloading right down here. Once it's done downloading, I'll double click on it to open it. And if you'll notice, it's a zipped file. And the way I know that is because it says extract all right here. So I'm just going to say extract all and extract it. And I've already done this. So, but here we go. We're just going to open this right now. So this is the, these are the extracted files. So I'm going to double click on the SVG right here. Or if I prefer, I can click on the Silhouette Studio file. It doesn't matter for my Silhouette. I'll do the Studio file for my Silhouette. And here it is. These are the parts that all came opened up. And notice they're all grouped together. Let me change my mat just a little bit. I'm just going to turn off these cut and print borders. Okay. So hopefully you can see these pretty well. What I'm going to do is just to make it so you can see it more easily is to go ahead and the line color, I'm going to up it so it's a little bit thicker so you can see it more clearly. See how that's helping? I'm gonna make it thicker like that. Okay, so now we can see, and let's look at this uh, image for just a little bit. See some of the things that are going on. These are score lines, obviously, here and here. Um, these are cut lines on this part and this part. And while I'm looking at this, I see something I'm not crazy about. Right here, if you scroll way in, I don't see any reason for all these little cuts to be made. So that's probably something I would address right away. And I would do that just by double clicking on this image. Oops, I have to ungroup it first. So I'm going to right click and ungroup. I can't work on anything without ungrouping it. All right, now I'm going to click off and click back on double clicking this time. And do you see the little nodes or the little squares, sometimes called points, that show up, these little gray things? Those are things that I can get rid of, and I'm going to do so by clicking on one. Notice it turns white. I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard and keep hitting delete until I can get rid of those. I also don't think that my cutting machine needs to go down here like this and cut and leave this little bit of junk right here. So I'm gonna start here at this node, click on it to make it white or the active node, and just start deleting some of these things down here. See, it keeps changing to the active node. Every time I hit delete on my keyboard, a new node is selected and notice it's working its way up that way. 
So I'm just going to go all the way to about there, I guess. And now that looks a lot more sensible to me. No reason to have all those little cuts made. I could also get rid of these if I wanted to by double clicking. Another way to get rid of a bunch of nodes at the same time, just hold down your shift key and drag a box around these with which selects all of them, then just hit delete on your keyboard and they're gone. All right, let's scroll back out. So now this is perfectly fine, whoopsie daisy, to use just like this for silhouette. Here's what I would need to do though. This part, I would want to group these guys back together again, the right click and group, because these are going to be print then cuts. So I would do these things in two different steps or maybe three. I like to move everything over here before I use it and then start on this side, moving them over as I use them. So I'm just going to show you this very quickly for silhouette and then we're going to mainly focus on Cricut. So don't be discouraged, you Cricut people. So all I need to do for silhouette is I'm going to use cardstock that is uh, letter size and I want it to be this way, the orientation. So I'm going to drag these over here now and see if they'll fit if I rotate them. Whoops, hold down my shift key and that makes me able to rotate it a little bit more like that. Okay, now the problem is I need to turn on my registration mark since these are print then cuts. Let's scroll in. I wanted you to see though that she did put a nice offset around all of these too and that will show up in Cricut Design Space as well. So let's scroll back out. So now I need to come over here to the third button over, turn on my registration marks and then also go back to the first button here in the page setup and turn on my cut border. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making sure that none of these little red cut lines go outside of that border. So that's perfect just like that. So what I would now do with silhouette is just come up here and say print and it would give me a preview of what it looks like and that looks perfect so then I would print it. So I might as well do this since I'm going to put one together for you. So I make this preferences um, high and you don't have to do that but I like to and it should print and then the next thing I would do is move that off of here but I don't want to do that right now it has to say exactly where it is and then start moving these pieces on to cut these obviously this one won't well, it will fit because I'll take off the registration marks. So hang on just a second. I'm going to go ahead and cut these out so I can continue on for you for Cricut. Okay, I'm back in silhouette and I wanted to show you that I remember when I upped the red outline of these just so you could see everything more clearly. Well, I need to remember to take that back down to like a one or a zero before I printed that with my silhouette because if it was a one or something bigger than that it would print and then show up in my final product. So the next thing we would do is I would just grab whoopsie grab these okay say file oh check out the width of them 4.521 I need to remember that remember so I can make everything the proper size over in Cricut. So I'm going to go file save selection, save to hard drive, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG because this is a print then cut. And I've already done that, so it's right here, 4.521 Harry Potter box card for Cricut. Save it as a JPEG and say OK. And yes, I want to replace it. And I'll leave all of these numbers as they are and say save. So now we'll come over to Cricut Design Space and I'll show you how this beginning part of the print and cut is. So we'll just go upload, upload an image, browse. Here it is, open. It's right here, complex, continue. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the advanced options because I want to leave that offset around there that the designer made. So change this color tolerance. Remember, I have to go to advanced options. If I don't go to advanced options, it's going to get rid, or usually it gets rid of it. 
around it. But you know what? This time it left it. So I guess we're good just like that. Sometimes if you find when you click here and your white offset is gone, you can come to advanced options and change your color tolerance. I usually like to start at about a number eight, but this time it worked just like this. So we'll say continue and I'll save it as a print then cut. And upload the image. Oops, I don't want to upload it. Let's go back. I want to insert this one now. Okay, so here they are. And you'll notice over here it says, wah, wah, there's a little warning sign, right? So we know what that problem is. This is not going to fit as a print then cut. It's too big. So it's very easy to remedy that. So all I'm going to do is get a box over here in the shapes area. Bring the box over, unlock the lock, and I think I'll just try see if I can put it around these parts down here. If I twirl it, can I just get those? I sure can. Look how easy that is. So now I'm going to select the box, select, hold down my shift key and select the other part. Look over here in the layers panel, just two things are selected and only two, which means I can slice. Okay, I can get rid of this X, get rid of this. X and now I'm going to be able to go ahead and make it just like this. Those are going to go on one and these will go on another. However, I could even do this. I think, let's see. Well, I might be able to even ungroup these a little bit more to make them fit, but I'll just do it in two pieces like this. So again, I'm just going to go to make it. I'll go ahead, grab this one first, say continue my A2, Air 2, Explorer 2 is hooking up. I'm going to send this to my printer first. After I print it, I'm not going to add bleed. I turned add bleed off on mine. Uh, I am going to print it and then I'll just cut these out with my Cricut. So let's go back to Silhouette now so I can show you how to get the other pieces ready for Cricut. So here we are. We're done with this. And we're going to get ready with this piece. Actually, we're just going to grab all of these pieces. Let's just bring them all over here. And again, I'm going to change the line back to what it normally is, which is just zero, actually, and hit enter. And now with all of these things selected, I'm going to come over here to file, save selection. But guess what? I need to remember the size of all this. So I think I want to change this a little bit, a little bit to put some of these things over like here. So it's not quite as wide. So I'm just kind of putting these things together a little bit more compactly, which might help a bit. And I can get rid of this guy way over here. All right, let's see, what do we have? Sure, it's kind of hard for you to see, but you'll get the idea in a minute. So I'm just gonna draw a big box around everything check it out. It's 22.775 inches wide. See it down here? 22.775. So I'm going to go to File, Save Selection, Save to Hard Drive, and I got to name it 22.275. I hope that's what it was. Uh, Harry for Cricut. And this time I'm going to save it as an SVG. Okay, there we go, 22.775. I think I misnumbered that, so let's check. So I'm going to upload, upload an image, browse. Let's see, 22, there it is. I'm going to rename this, so I'm going to right click on it and say rename, because I have the wrong name there. It should be 775, remember? Whoops. 
22.775. And now I'm going to open that. And I'm going to save it. Click on it to insert it. So now we have all these bazillion little pieces, right? Okay, so now we have to start with using Cricut to get things properly situated. But the first thing we need to do is to make sure these are the right size. Right now the width is 8.035, but we know based on what we named it, and we can look right over here, the width is supposed to be 22.775. So making sure the lock is locked, I'm going to change the width to 22.775 and hit enter. And now that's how big all these pieces should be. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup them. Okay, and I know that certain pieces are going to be white and certain ones are going to be other colors. This one and this one, this one, all of the ones that do not have these little marks on them are going to be, we'll say, a dark blue. Okay, so all those pieces are going to be dark blue. Now these two pieces, I'm going to change them to white because I'm just going to cut them out of white cardstock. Now's when we start to do our doctoring a little bit. So we, remember when we looked over there at um, Silhouette and we saw that this line and this line and this line, they were all score lines, right? So these were score lines. So what I need to do first though is to ungroup this thing so we can get busy working on it. Let's see what we got now. Okay, now when I click on these, I get these cut lines and these score lines all together. So I think I can ungroup one more time and certainly can. So now if I click on this piece right here, it comes up by itself. Notice it comes up in three pieces, which is really weird. I just think it's the way it was designed and we don't need it like that. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of this little cut and this one. And watch what happens if we can see anything over here. I'm going to just hide it and hide this one. So notice it got rid of those two extra lines that were right here. And then there are some more right here. There are two on this line as well. Look, I'm going to get rid of, watch this, click on this. I'm going to get rid of this one and I'm going to get rid of this one. They're, they're not necessary. I'm not sure why they're there. Same thing with this one. I'm going to get rid of this one by hiding it and this one by hiding it. Okay. So that leaves me with these three places that I need to put score lines. How do I add score lines? Simple. Come over here to the shape tool, click on score line. There it is. And we know I need three for this piece right here. So I'm going to just duplicate that score line. So I have a total of three. Then I'm going to drag one of these up here put it over top of that line right there that I don't need. And what I usually like to do, and I didn't show this in my last video, is raise it up a little bit like that so it's above this, so it's above the one I want to get rid of. Okay, so I'm going to click on the one I want to get rid of and just hit delete. And now I can just use my arrow key, click on this one, use my arrow key and butt that down into where it needs to be, just like that. So let me show that again. Here's the one we're going to get rid of. This is the one I need to use because I don't want to use their score, the score line or the line. I'm going to move this one up above, right on top of it, but higher up this way. So that allows me to see this one right here. So I can click on it and delete it and then click on the one I do need or want and move it down with my arrow key. Perfect. All right, one more right here. So I need to take this one and maybe make it a little bit longer. Hold down my shift key and grab the rotate handle and just rotate it around like that. Whoops. And then I'm just going to bring it up here. Again, I'll make it a little bit 
off from this one that I want to get rid of. So I can click on that one. I could drag it down and delete it. And then just take this one, use my arrow key again, and put it where it needs to be. So those are perfect right there now. So all I need to do now is say attach. Whoops, I don't want this one attached. I just, this, whoops, 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 whoops. <laughs> just want these guys. Oh, why does that keep getting that one? I'm going to move him down away. There we go. Now I'll just get this one and say attach. I need those score lines all attached to where they need to be. And these are cut lines right here. Okay, so let's look at this one now. There's a few things we need to do with this one. Easy peasy. And actually, it's just this one right... Well, there's two actually here and here. We need to change these into score lines. Again, I don't want to just come up here and change the line type to score because it won't work well with my Cricut. So I'm going to click on this and say ungroup. That's going to let me get this line right here. Oh, but it's... Look, it's getting these cut lines and that. So I need to ungroup again. So now I can just pick this score line if I want to. So what do I do to get a real score line for my Cricut? Come over here to Shapes, Score Line, and there it is. And it looks like it's a pretty good size, so I'm just going to duplicate it. I'll just drag it right over here. Again, a little bit up from the one on top of it as best I can. We go and then I can get rid of this one down here delete and then I can click on this one and move it down okay so here we go with the second one again just bring this over here a little bit up grab this one delete and then just move this one down perfect that's all I could move it one more if I want that's all we need to do. Now we're ready to rumba. So I'm going to grab these again and say attach. And now guess what? We are totally ready to go. Let's go to make it. Our first piece is going to cut just like this. Our second piece just like this. And then our actual other pieces that we need are like this. And if we cancel this and go back, if we unhide these, We now have every single thing we need to make our Harry Potter box card. So I'll finish cutting these out with my Cricut and then I'll show you how we'll put them together. So I'll meet you back here. Okay, I've already put the first three little things onto this one. Now these pieces that we cut out, they have numbers on them on the left hand side. This one has a number one, this one has a number two, and this one has a number three. And I want those numbers just lined on up on top of each other to keep everything oriented properly. So on the number one one, I can tell that a hat goes on here. So I'm just going to put my glue on this part. It makes it easier. And then just take the hat and just glue it right on here. There we go. And the other thing that goes on here actually is this letter. So I'm just going to put some of it on the lower part here. Put it down like that. Okay, so that's number one, which is done. Number two is done. And now for number three, I need to put on this kettle and this was all cut with my Cricut the other one that I did I cut with my Cameo okay, here's this book it goes right here And then this little ink thingy goes here. And the last thing that goes on this one are the glasses. And they just kind of get stuck on there, so I'll put the glue on them. 
Oopsie, I missed. Okay. All right. So that's how easy that is. Now these three are done. I'll let them dry for a bit while I get this ready. These are the two pieces. As I said, I did them in yellow, not white, like I said I was going to. You bend them down on the score lines, and then you just glue them together. So what you can actually do is open that up so that you can get a nice fit like this. Get some good pressure on here for a couple seconds. <coughs> Pardon me. And I can do the same thing on this side. And if you're working along, you may want to do this part first so it has a little bit of time to dry while you're doing the other pieces. But you know what? I can also do these other things I'm going to do. So in addition to this, you don't want to glue on the side pieces yet. You need to have these little slits available to you. But you can glue on the front piece if you want to, which goes right here. So when this flap comes down, it goes like that. I like using this art glitter glue. This is the first time I've used it. Hadn't before. I always balk at using wet glue, but I'm enjoying using this. And I do have a link for it down below if you want to try it out. It's not cheap, but it goes a long, long way because it you use just a little bit. I also did buy the extra uh, somewhere in here the extra piece that goes with it so that it has a really fine point. But I really haven't had to use that yet. Okay, let's see what else can I put on. Now the sides I don't want to put on yet, remember? So that's it. That's all I can do. Okay, so now let's see what we got. So this was number two, this was number one, and this was number three. So I guess I'll work from the back forward. So what you're going to do is put these little tabs inside these little slots that are back there. It's really pretty easy. I don't know that you'll be able to see anything I'm doing, but the only hardest, the hardest part is if your cardstock is a little bit flimsy, it's hard to get it started through the little slit, which this piece that I have right here, the one that has the number uh, cut out of it, is sometimes a little flimsy. Okay, here it is so far. What I have to do now is put this on here. Of course, I could put anything I wanted on here. It doesn't have to be this one. And then the next thing I have to do is I just take this, fold this over, and glue these on to make the sides look better and also to further stabilize the inside part. So you just put glue around here. Okay that and that completes my Harry Potter box the only thing I can tell you is that if I were doing this you know for a real gift I probably would make sure to use a thicker cardstock than what I've used here I just used the cheaper cardstock, and I think if I had used textured cardstock, that would have been easier to put it together, and I think it would have been just easier all the way around. But anyway, there's the card. I think it turns out super cute for free. You can fold it up like this and put it in an envelope, and then your recipient can open it up. Anyone who's a very big Harry Potter fan, I think, would love this. 
So thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, let me know below in the comments. Also check out the links below. I have the free file for this listed there and also all of my other links, including my Amazon store. You can see a lot of the products that I really do like. So thanks again for joining me. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Bye-bye.